So, YouTube, Visual Gaming Network, and welcome to episode 4 of Mario in Java Tutorial. Last episode, we created our dimensions, and we actually set, set our sizes, and we can use this when we create our frame. Speaking of frames, every game needs one, so I don't think we need to do anything else so I guess it's time to create our frame so if we actually try to run our game come on see it crashes because no such method error which means we don't have a main method now what a main method is, is like, here, this is not really, this is a constructor, but if we go public void, la, you don't need to type this, that is a method. Now we need our main method for every Java game we create. And if we don't have our main method, well, we pretty much cannot run our game at all. And by the way, the code in the main method is the first code that our Java game thing compiler will go to. So we want to create our method. It's going to call, be called public static. You should know what that means. Then void. Void means we return nothing. I'll explain that later. So I just want to type void main. And then the parameters, we want to create a string array. An array is sort of like, let's say we have a whole bunch of integers, and but we want to store those integers, and that's what arrays are for. They're just helping us store things. A string args. We will be using arrays later on in future episodes. So what void means is we're returning nothing, and I'll give you an example when we do return something. You don't have to type this, but I'm going to type public int. We're creating, this is still a method, but this is actually going to return an int. Because it is an integer method, method it has to return an int. Public int. Okay, so, but it gets an error because we need to return something. Because it's an int, so we can return 5. And we can, and we're going to be using this sort of stuff in our game after, in later episodes. Alright, you should know what that means by now, but now we're going to create another object and we're going to call it a J frame. Now, what a J frame is, you can think of it as a frame, but it's in Java. So, you can think of a J frame as short for Java frame. So, we're going to go J frame frame is equal to a new J frame. Now, in here, we can actually set the title of our window. So, in here, we're just going to type title, and we're going to create one now. Public static final string. String is pretty much a string is like integers, but it holds a character value instead of a numerical value. Okay, public static final string. Oops, title equals, let's say, just Mario. Okay, we created our string. But we get an error on our JFrame because we need to import it. We've done that with Canvas. So if we go Command-Shift-O, we can just import it like that. And that's really good. So now we need to set things for our frame. The first thing we want to do is frame.add and we want to put game in here frame.add game. Now let me just go create a game object. You should do this too. Game game is equal to new game. As I said before in last episode or two episodes ago, when we create a game object, it refers to this code. It goes to this code. So we go frame.add game. It's adding the contents of game, which is here, into our frame. So now our frame will have a size. So we want to go frame.pack, which just, just really means just pack everything together. 
I don't know a good way to explain it. That's sort of the way I heard it. I don't know a good way to explain it. You just look it up on Google. It'll have the answer. So now we want to type. We want to type frame dot set resizable is equal to false. Now set resizable means we we can't resize our frame, and we don't want to resize our frame because uh, you might see that sort of professional PC games or like finished PC games like Minecraft and all that. You can resize the frame because the programmers they know how to do that. But I'm not the best programmer and I don't. And you'll see a lot of tutorials. Uh, we don't do this as well because it's sort of professional coding. And why we, we're setting it to false is because it will cause a lot of graphical errors really. And we don't want that. That's pretty bad. We don't want lots of graphical errors, so we're just going to keep it to false. And we want to go frame dot set location relative to null. This doesn't really do much. All this does is putting our frame in the middle of the screen, which people like. I don't know if you like it, but I know it's just a good place to put your frame. So we're just going to set the location relative to null. So we're going to go frame dot set default close operation, and we want to type in the parameters jframe dot exit on close. Um, make sure to type that right. Now, why we do that is because when we click our little X button, uh, this is this is the code that will happen. This is the code that will execute. It will exit on close. If we do do nothing on close, then it won't work. When we just click our X button, we'll do nothing. There's lots of things as abort, but the best thing is just exit on close. I want to keep that. And, of course, we want to set our frame visible. So we just want to go frame dot set visible is equal to true. And I'll actually set our frame visible to true. So now we can actually go ahead and run our game. Come on. And here we go. We have our frame. That is great. That is what every game needs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.